And now, viewers, this is the way they baptize in the Catholic Church. The priest, the priest, the, the priest, yeah, dip his hand in there. Uh, in the name of the Father. <laughs> Even she don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Even she don't want it. وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى ابْنَ مَرْيَمَ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أَقُولَ مَا لَيْسَ لِي بِحَقَّ إِنْ كُنْتُ قُلْتُهُ فَقَدْ عَلِمْتَهُ تعلم ما في نفسي ولا يعلم ما في نفسك إنك أنت علام الغيوب. I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the fabricated Trinity verses. Matthew 28 verse 19 is considered Christians' favorite verse, and it is the single most used verse in defense for their Trinitarian belief. I will, however, disprove their claims in five points. Number one, the Bible does not command Christians to use those words during the baptism ceremony. Number two, the concept of the Trinity is wrong. Even the Ryrie Study Bible states, this is a mystery which no analogy can explain satisfactorily. Of course not, because this idea is utter nonsense. Number three, Jesus did not teach the doctrine of the Trinity. Jesus was not a Trinitarian. Instead, Jesus taught the same message of monotheism preached by every single prophet and messenger sent by God Almighty. Number four, Trinitarians are oblivious and unaware of the Trinity verses were added to the Bible, raising questions not only about its authenticity, but also its reliability. And number five, we do have historical evidence on how the Trinity verses like this one were exactly added to the Bible and the theological implications surrounding the Trinity doctrine. If you have not seen my videos about the logical problem of the Trinity, make sure you watch that first. I'll put the link in the comment section. Greetings, good evening everyone, and welcome back to Blogging Tawheed. It is undeniable the complex history of the Bible's formation and the development of the Christian doctrine is a result of the invention of the Trinity at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. It is an established historical fact that Jesus was not considered as a God by the early church in the first three centuries. This is documented not only by the first Council of Nicaea, but also by biblical scholars throughout history who don't think Jesus is God in a Trinitarian sense in the New Testament. More and more academics and distinguished scholars also maintain that the doctrine of the Trinity is not taught anywhere in the Bible. Some Christians, however, argue otherwise and claim the Trinity is everywhere in the New Testament. Well, they go further than that and insist the Old Testament is all about Jesus, which is erroneous since the Old Testament is strictly unit Unitarian and the message is clear, monotheism, Tawheed, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And some others ignorantly wave Bible verses out of context and claim Jesus is God who became flesh and walked around in a human form. They have been trying so hard for so long to defend something God the Almighty Himself considers not only blasphemy, but also idolatry. Yet, I'm the enemy for exposing their lies and illogical thinking and preaching the truth so that you may 
be amongst those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows his mercy on them on the day of judgment. Now, let's turn to Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20. The genuineness of this passage has also been questioned by Christians, commentators. And this is the goal of this fabricated Trinity Verses episodes, that at any point, this passage and others in the Bible does not teach the Trinity at all. Interestingly enough, the Gospel Commission or the Great Commission is the last recorded words of Jesus in both Matthew and Mark. So Matthew's version says, and it is the last verses according to Matthew, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Mark's version of this same command is, if we go to Mark, which is just the next chapter after Matthew, it says, well, it's missing. It's not here in this 1901 revised standard version. That's another problem, and we'll get to that soon. Mark chapter 16 ends at verse 8. This 1958 authorized King James Version otherwise says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16 verse 15. But Matthew is somehow often coded more than Mark by Christians as evidence for the Trinity. It is, however, an interpolation into the text. Respected and distinguished Bible scholars say that the formula was an insertion and that it originally was, go and make disciples of all nations in my name. Matthew 28 verse 19 is the only verse in the entire New Testament with the Trinity formula. All other verses point to baptism being performed in the name of Jesus the Messiah alone. One of the early baptisms is described in Acts chapter 8 verse 14 and 17. It says, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. This passage summarizes the exact ceremony of baptism in the name of Jesus the Messiah. Now, notice carefully that baptism in the name of Christ was sufficient, and certainly the scriptural meaning is more encompassing. Now, another revealing passage in Acts chapter 19, verse 1 and 6. And Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe in the one who would come after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. This passage also shows that baptism in or into the name of Jesus Christ the Messiah is not only necessary but also sufficient. And if you take for example Apostle Peter in Acts, he always baptized in the name of Jesus the Messiah. It's Acts chapter 2 verse 38. It says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 8 verse 16 it says, For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, it's worth noting that Lord here does not mean God, by the way. Lord means master, teacher, rabbi, etc. 
This phrase, Lord Jesus, is being used frequently by Christians to indicate the deity of Jesus, when in fact Lord is a title that refers to rulers, kings, husbands, governors, prophets, and so forth. Another one, another verse in Acts chapter 10, verse 48, it says, So Peter ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus, the Messiah. Then they asked him to stay there for several days. Therefore, Matthew 28, verse 19, assuming the passage is genuine, does not in any event teach a mandatory baptismal formula. Furthermore, Acts 8, verse 14 and 17, and Acts 19, verse 1 and 6, serve as proof of this assertion. In those passages, the Greek term for in the name of reads as Ais to enoma to, exactly as it does in Matthew 28, verse 19. The occasional claim that the expression Ais to enoma only appears in Matthew 28, verse 19 is therefore incorrect. If Jesus Christ had given his apostles a command in Matthew 28, verse 19, to use a particular formula during baptism, then his disciples would have been in flagrant violation of his command, as they never used that formula. At least there is no biblical record that they ever used it. Rather, we find that Paul told the disciples to be baptized in or into the name of Jesus the Messiah in Acts 19, verse 1 and 6, not in into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, genuine or not, the concept stated in Matthew 28, verse 19, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is erroneous and unbiblical. The wording in Matthew 28, verse 19, baptizing them is describing a process during the entire baptism, uh, baptismal ceremony, not a particular one-time rendered formula. Jesus Christ did not say, you must baptize them in, this, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, which is quite in contrast with the requirements stated in passages such as Acts 2 verse 38, where we read, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Notice Christ's words in the parallel account in Mark, chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, where it says, And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the, gasp, the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe and is not baptized is not baptized will be condemned, better uh, translated as judged. But there is not even a hint of a baptismal formula here. We should also note that Mark chapter 16 verse 15 and 16 does not include the concept of baptizing someone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I will explain why this might be the case here shortly. Now, let's assume that Matthew 28, verse 19 is true and genuine, and that Jesus did command his disciples to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Why would Peter go against Jesus' command and baptize only in his name? Well, the answer lies in the text. The formula of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit, is not part of the original text of Matthew. Therefore, it is erroneous and unbiblical. And some of you might ask, well, how do we know it is not part of the text? Well, let us get some references and find out. We will discuss the concerns authors and commentaries have raised as to the genuineness of Matthew 28 verse 19 
coming up in the next video. You do not want to miss.